Easy way, slide down. Whoop. Hey, uh, how are you all going today? Well, today I decided to. There's this little cave down off the Pancala Trail. There's actually a story behind it. I'll work that out and I get home and I'll let you know over a voiceover. Because I don't actually know the whole story. I know bits of it, but I prefer to get it all factual before I tell you. But anyway, I'll show you this. Go in there and have a look, eh? I'm keen. Put some lights on first. All right, here we go. Stashed in there, no, it would have. Yep. And this was actually dug out by someone, which I'll explain later. Broken bottle, someone's got a glass collection there, look. So need another bit of a dugout. People are digging bits out everywhere, look at it. Oh, look the water seepage. It's like crystallized or something. Is that water or crystal? Nah, it's water. Yeah, water. Okay. You can watch out, man. Is that little nook and granny? That's pretty cool. Alright, I found an article. I'll try and read it out to you. Uh, his real name is Samuel Davis. He was from, he's the son of a Melbourne based clergyman. Sam came to the Air Peninsula in the 1880s. He lived in caves, he found gold, and he walked everywhere. Old newspaper articles say Sam was in Port Augusta before deciding to travel south. Being that travel options were hard to come by at the time, he found an old iron wheel, a fork of wood, a length of canvas which he stretched over the wood and made himself a wheelbarrow. The story goes that he walked from Port Augusta to Port Lincoln with all his worldly goods inside that wheelbarrow. But back then, this wasn't all that unusual. All accounts talk of Wallaby Sam being a little different from most folks. As some said, he was highly intelligent while on Air Peninsula, Wallaby Sam made his home in many caves. With a little bit of ingenious renovating, he made a comfortable home with wire netting for his bed, planks for shelving, a fireplace to cook and keep warm. He dug wells and made reservoirs. Known caves that he lived in were proper base, Bolt, Splode, Spalding Cove, Charlton Gully, Butler Tanks and Lipson. He's also got one at Murray's Point, and the one we seen today at Snook's Landing. We'll be doing Murray's Point in a couple of days. One report talks of Wallaby Sam finding gold. It was sufficient enough for a group of businessmen to become interested in Wallaby Sam's finding. Some reports say they were from Adelaide, others say Port Lincoln. Wallaby Sam must have felt that they were ripping him off. He was not happy with them. The story tells of him leaving his clothes on the beach and disappearing. He made the townspeople think that he was he drowned. At a meeting, the businessman had called to discuss the find. Wallaby Sam, who was very much alive, reportedly hid an eavesdrop to find out where they were, what they were planning. Apparently, he suddenly appeared in the middle of the meeting 
scaring everyone half to death. Wannabe Sam was no silly person. He was not going to be taken for a fool. What we know is that Wallaby Sam was a unique character who was a miner in his younger years and a fisherman when he got older. It was at the later stages of his life that things didn't go to plan. His home was at Proper Bay where he fished for his living. Apparently an order was signed to capture Wallaby Sam and put him in an old age asylum. The police were commissioned to do this and they captured him at his Proper Bay home. The reason is not clear to us. Maybe he couldn't look after himself any longer because of his health or age. Documents show he stayed in the asylum until he died after two, 1910. So yeah, he's an old bugger. No, oh, well, that's a bit of information. Sorry I couldn't get any more for you. I just found that bit of information on ABC Air Peninsula. Shout out to them. Cheers for that. That's pretty cool. Smash me head on a rock. There's a bit of. Uh. All right. As you just seen, that is a cave. I mean, like I said, I'll explain the story when I get home. I've got to climb my way out of here yet. But yeah, I'll explain that story when I get home because I'll find out some more information. And um, yeah, that's part of that story. Now, what else can we do today? Hmm. I mean, I've done a video on this stretch, so I'm not going to bore you with another one. But I'll have a look around here while we're down here. See if there's anything interesting washed up. Oh, sand, that sand was soft. Oh, sorry, that one. I'm not walking up that path, that looks cool though. Yep, thought we'd find something washed up. As always, a bit of mat. Oh, well, it's not always mat, but you always find something. I'll pick that up in a sec. Yeah. You can see this has got a bit of erosion from the wind and water. Listen to the wind up there. Yeah, not in the mood to get wet today, sorry. <laughs> Pick this up and run that to the bin. Oh, look at the bugs! Oh, silverfish. Where was that? There was something here. Ah. Oh. And if you ever wondered what a uh, seawater constant erosion does to glass. Here, I'll show you. Okay, smooth edges. That's an old CUB. VB bottle. I think. Oh, it's a bit worn. But that looks like the CUB circle. Anyway. Anyway, let's get this rug off the beach into the bin speak is in a second now I'm gonna keep and sadly since there's no bin down there anymore I'm gonna to have to take the rug back to my place and bin it God council get Jack together please doing more on this bloke because it's a pretty interesting story okay i'll speak to you all soon don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell button and please comment thank you very much and i'll see you next time i'm out